love to brag about you all day, but we don't have a lot of time here, and, but in the hour and ten minutes we're given, we will sing your praises loudly today. I would ask you to reflect on this moment. We've been through a lot in these two years. You've accomplished much despite of that. Let it drive you forward in your education, your career, and life to strive for the continuous evolution as a citizen of the world you're inheriting. The synergy of leadership, intelligence, passion, and empathy are needed to make our world better. While our UF stage may be small, from small stages come great performances and great character. Let this moment spur you on to bigger stages, bigger challenges, and greater accomplishments. We have faith in you to build on the legacy you have begun here at UF. So Godspeed on your continued journey. As part of today's celebration of our students, it's my privilege to welcome our 2022 College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences alumni speaker, Mr. Doug Jenkins. Doug, if you'd come on up. <laughs> Doug is a 2002 graduate of the University of Finley. During his time at UF, he served as a student general manager of 88.3 WLFC. He spent nearly 20 years working in radio, 14 of which were spent as news director at 1150 WIMA in Lima and 1330 WFIN in Finley. He also served as a play-by-play -play announcer, show producer, morning show host, and sports talk radio host at various times. Doug also returned to UF in 2016 while working at WFIN to serve as the faculty station manager here at WLFC, which we're very grateful for. He led his newsroom to be named among the best small market news operations in Ohio, among other awards for breaking news coverage. He now serves as the membership and events manager for Finley Hancock County Chamber of Commerce, where he has been for nearly three years. In his time at his latest position, he has used his knowledge of media to better serve the chamber operations and the members of the Finley and Hancock County Business Council. Doug Jenkins has been married to his wife, Rebecca, for 15 years, a former employee here as well. And in his spare time, he enjoys golf, home automation projects, and he has three children. So please welcome my friend and former colleague, Doug Jenkins. All right, I'll give you a quick heads up. Even though I spent uh, a lifetime in radio, I'm a bit of a nervous public speaker because when I'm on the radio, I can just pretend that you're all wildly entertained by what I'm saying, but when I see you in person, I can see that you're not. Uh, so Ron covered some of the things, uh, a little bit about my background. Uh, the 2002 or 2012, so in 2002, I did walk across the stage here at the university. I was too crowded shy of graduating, uh, but the story gets dumber the older I get. I had convinced my advisor to let me write a screenplay as an independent study for my last two credits. He kind of looked at me like, sure. And now I understand why he gave me that look, because I never wrote that screenplay. Um, so 2012, I actually did finish my degree, uh, but since I already had a job in radio, I just considered it that I went pro early. Uh, I do have a Master in Arts in Education with an emphasis with online learning from the University of Findlay. That comes into play in just a little bit. Uh, Ron covered a lot of that, and uh, I am very proud of the work that uh, we did in the radio, both commercially and here at the University of Findlay. So a few things, like Ron said, uh, he covered all this. We'll talk about the modernization project here in a second. So, a few non-new things. How many of you are on Twitter? Do you remember Twitter when it first started? I'm guessing the kids in the room don't, but it was didn't have it on your phone because we didn't have smartphones. There wasn't an app for it. And when it came out, I was working in the newsroom in Lima, and everybody was kind of laughing about it. And I thought, there's something to this. We could put breaking news on it. But then we thought about our audience. And our audience was definitely not on Twitter at an AM news station. But what you could do with Twitter back then is you could actually text to your Twitter feed. So we could be in a courtroom, and we could have a verdict. And we could text that verdict right to our main page, because you could embed the Twitter feed on there. So I was really happy to do that. Nobody understood why I was texting immediately in the courtroom and who I was, uh, who I was texting to. But yeah, you would text to your Twitter account. Now you would just do it off of your app. Uh, locally here, we put uh, a Waze traffic map for WFIN. Now you're thinking, why does Finley, Ohio need a traffic map? Most of the time, you're right. But when we launched it, it was when they were doing all of the construction on I-75. Uh, and those construction delays and accidents in the construction zone would spill into the city. So we were able to convince Waze to give Findlay, Ohio its own traffic map. 
that we didn't have to pay for. So that was uh, an interesting thing. I I'm a big fan of podcasts. Uh, in my time doing play-by-play -play for Ottawa Glendorf High School, which is about 20 minutes west of here, uh, they won a couple of state championships. The one in 2008 was completely out of the blue. Nobody expected them to win it. Uh, and so 10 years after the fact, we went back and we interviewed all of the different uh, players that were on that team, the coaches, uh, you know, some of the other media members who saw them and, and put together a narrative podcast that uh, I, probably one of my favorite things that I've ever done, uh, just because it wasn't related to news, it was something off the beaten path for me and uh, it, it turned out pretty well. Uh, that doesn't show up real well up here. That's me riding the gatekeeper at Cedar Point. One fun thing about working in media is that Cedar Point will always reach out to media, and the TV and radio stations, and every time they have a new roller coaster, hey, come ride it, and then tell people how great it is. I love roller coasters. So I took advantage of this anytime they would open a new one. The best was in 2002, 2003, when they opened up Top Thrill Dragster. They had us, I was at a radio station in Delphus, which is, good two hour drive from Cedar Point. Somehow we convinced our station manager to let us go do the morning show there and, uh, and rode that. And then this one, this is my crowning accomplishment in, me accomplishment in media. Uh, this is the pizza cam on uh, news or on election night from uh, two, yeah, it's been about three or four years ago at this point. Uh, Facebook Live has become an integral part of what we did in the newsroom. It's an integral part of what we do at the Chamber of Commerce now. And I just decided for my last election night coverage, we were going to have a, a live feed the entire night. So it would either be me talking to the camera or it would be, a, uh, it would be you know, me doing my work and you could just kind of hang out there and wait for the next election updates. And we used a Google Doc and updated the numbers there and everything. But the one thing I hadn't thought of is what do I do when I have to go to the bathroom? What do I put the camera on? So we just put a camera on the newsroom pizza for that night. So anytime I had to go to the bathroom, people would see uh, the, the pizza hanging out there. All right, some more serious stuff. Uh, in my time working in news, my favorite part of working in news was breaking news coverage, which is a, it's a double-edged sword. Breaking news is some of the most exciting work you can do in journalism because the puzzle, you don't even know what the puzzle looks like. You're just put, trying to put together the pieces. You're trying to get the most accurate information out there and you're trying to do it in a timely manner to keep the public informed, maybe keep them out of a hazardous situation, maybe try and make sure they're getting the right information when there are a lot of rumors out there. The flip side of that coin is you're dealing, people with, you're dealing with people on their worst day, and it's, you need to be mindful of that. I think sometimes media gets, especially reporters who are in the field, get a bad rap that, oh, you love it when bad things happen. I'm not gonna deny that there's a rush when you're doing breaking news but it's a rush of doing your job. It's not a rush because something bad is happening. Um, so highlighting some of these and some breaking news coverage uh, that I did uh, when, when I was a news director, this is probably one of the first ones. I'm not entirely sure this is actually a picture from a tanker truck explosion in Lima. I found it on the Toledo Blades website. Here's a lesson for all of you. Document your work, whether you're in media, public relations or anything. Keep a profile together because if you think it's just going to stay on, a, on the internet in perpetuity, it won't. Website domains change. Uh, corporations will change things. So I don't actually have any of my pictures or audio or anything from this, but uh, this happened pretty soon after I became a news director. Uh, a tanker truck got into a crash, exploded on the west side of Lima killed a doctor and uh, I believe the driver of the truck, maybe the driver might have gotten away, it's been a long time ago. Uh, I was able to be one of the first people on the scene because it happened very close to where I live. Uh, you would be amazed at the shock wave that an exploding tanker truck will give. We thought that it was a couple of rail, rail cars that were next to a rail spur close to our house that had bumped into each other. It was several miles away, it was a tanker truck explosion. My wife was pregnant with our first son at the time. She's like, oh, I'll go with you. Like, I don't know if that's a great idea, but she went. The, the hardest part of this story was that we didn't have a great way to get on the radio at the time. And we didn't have a great way. We didn't have our smartphones yet. We didn't have Twitter. We didn't even have a text to Twitter yet at this point. It happened so early. I had to wait for a producer to get back at the radio station before I could even go live to it. And we, we other stations were able to put it on there. Is that the most important thing in the moment? No, certainly we're doing a lot of gathering. But as a reporter, if you're first on the scene, a lot of times you want to be the first person to break that story, wasn't able to. So we made a lot of changes after that. That is a picture of the 2007 flood. That is actually from Bluffton. 
So a lot of people forget in 2007, obviously we've all heard the stories about the Finley flood. There's been a lot of great coverage about that. What people don't realize is that in the hours before Finley flooded, Bluffton actually flooded first. That's 75 completely covered. Uh, finding my way into Bluffton that day is still one of the biggest challenges ever because every road was flooded out. Bluffton and Ottawa, for the most part, were an island. Thankfully, we had a news truck, and I ignored all of my advice that we had been giving on the road, road all day. Just turn around, don't drown. Ah, I think we've got the ground clearance on this. I can make it. I did, fortunately. And then people were like, didn't you tell people not to do that? Yes, they did. Uh, this is from a, uh, a business explosion in Lima. Uh, fortunately, nobody was injured in this. This was at Tuttle Construction. I want to say it happened around 2008. Uh, I actually work with Tuttle Construction at the Chamber of Commerce now. Uh, and every time I talk to people there, I'm like, so how long have you been there? Just to see if they have some memories of that day. Um, there was a fast food restaurant just down the street from there, and that became the, the newsroom for the day. Happy days in Lima on the west side, if you're familiar. This is from the Argyle Fire in Findlay around 2011. Uh, that was one that was my first time doing breaking news coverage, kind of collaborating with uh, the Courier because I was working for WFI and they were owned by the same company at the time. Uh, and that is just use of Facebook Live. So after a while, you start to realize that the best way to get this information out to people is through social media. This particular story uh, happened just south of here in Arlington. There had been a stabbing at a house close to the school. There are a lot of rumors online about, oh, the, you know, the school's on lockdown, there's an active shooter, and you know, that's the worst thing that can possibly be out there, are these rumors where people are worried about their kids and they can't get a hold of anybody. So we went right to where the source of the rumors are, Facebook, went live from just outside the scene to make sure that people knew that there weren't, their kids were okay, actually. Um, and uh, as a result, we're able to get that information out a lot quicker. It's amazing what live video on Facebook did to the news industry. I've got a couple heavier ones at the end. The picture that just came up is Tarika Wilson. She was shot and killed at a police shooting in 2009 in Lima. It's a situation that had it happened in the social media age, Lima would have been exactly like Milwaukee was a couple of years ago. Um, it was probably the most tense, not only in a breaking news situation, but from an overall coverage standpoint that I've ever experienced. And, well, I'm out of news now. So probably the most, that's, that's as, as tough as it got. I mean, there were protests, tempers were heated, there was a long trial. The trial ended up with the officer being acquitted. People weren't happy outside the courthouse. I'm a one-man band newsroom at the time doing a live stand-up from, uh, from outside to our producer back there. Uh, it was a bad situation and one that, uh, that I won't forget. And this last one is one that I, I still think about it a lot. I put it last because I still, uh, it's tough. This is the Bluffton University bus crash. Uh, this happened 15 years ago now. Th I can remember almost every part of this day and the follow-up coverage. We, uh, we were in, it was very early in the morning when we're all in the newsroom, uh, well, not all, it's, I was one person newsroom, but the morning show host is there, the morning show host producer there, so the sports director's there. And we have news channels up in the control room and they're showing live pictures from Atlanta. There's this bus on I-75 and they said, we're hearing that it's a, a baseball team from Ohio. Now my previous experience working at WDOH in Delphi, where we've worked a lot with Bluffton University, I knew that their baseball team was always going south around this time of year. I think it was March 2nd was the day. They were always heading south for their spring games at that time. And so I went to our sports director. I said, I can't confirm it, but that might be Bluffton's bus because I know they're heading down this time of year. I don't recall how we got the next tip that it was Bluffton University's bus, but one of my friends from when I was uh, an undergrad here was working in their public relations department at the time, Jill Dilding. Uh, so I called Jill, I said, hey Jill, what's going on? She's like, well, I'm driving into work. So is it Bluffton's boss? She goes, well, I'm driving into work and it's six in the morning, so you can pretty well guess what's going on. Uh, that was, that's tough. It's tough to be, you can't be emotional in it. You can't break down reporting on these things. You have to be empathetic to the people who are involved. I went to and covered the funeral of one of the students. Uh, he was from Elida High School, just outside of Lima. 
I had another person just join the newsroom. His first day was covering one of the other funerals uh, for another kid that was from Lima. It was tough. My brother had just had a friend die from a drunk driver, uh, and I had just been to his funeral. It felt very much like that. So you've got all those emotions going through, but you, you have to put those aside. It's tough. So that brings me to advice time, and I know I'm running a little bit long on time. I'll try not to speed through this too much. In this field, you have to take care of yourself. It doesn't really matter if it's news media, media how, whatever you're doing, you gotta take care of yourself. In news media especially, those take a toll on you. So you have to do those stupid things that I was showing you ahead of time to balance it out. Yeah, if Cedar Point sends me an invitation to go ride a roller coaster, which they don't anymore, I wish they would, but if they send me an invitation to ride a roller coaster, I'm gonna take that day. It was hard to do because news is an industry where people are like, ah, you just, it's the grind, it's the grind, and it is a grind. And to a degree, I respect that grind. It's, you know, you're proud of what you're able to do in those, those situations, but you have to be able to also get on the other side of that coin, so you have to go see a therapist. Take your days off from work that they, they give you. And believe me, you'll work for bosses who will give you an, a look when you're like, hey, I'm gonna take vacation. Well, this is during ratings period. Nobody's listening to the radio because I'm on it. It's fine. I'll be off for a day. Take care of yourself. Be adaptable because nothing goes according to plan. This is part of the reason why I like breaking news is because there is no plan. Uh, and then you start to work on things. What are the things we had to do on the Bluffton, on that day of the Bluffton bus crash? They had a press conference at the university, and there was a ton of media there. And I thought, all right, here's how we're going to cover it. Unfortunately, I had some older people in the office like, no, you take this antiquated equipment. It's been working since the 50s. Well, you want to know what day it didn't work? That day. When we were plugged into our national affiliate, we had awful audio. So you have to be able to adapt. So we threw a cell phone up there real quick. It wasn't the best, but it got the job done. Being able to adapt not only in things that happen in your career, to your career. Brings me to my next point, don't be a box checker. I've been workshopping this one on my wife because we were watching some stupid reality show and one of the women on it was like going down her list. She's like, I'm out of college, I have a fiance, we need to get married, I have to have kids, here's what's going with my job next and like there's all these check, 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 check. What happens when you run out of check boxes? You become miserable because you've done everything and now what? Or what if it doesn't go according to plan? I'm gonna give you a secret about my whole news career. It wasn't supposed to happen. I was doing sports talk in Lima, doing local sports talk. That's what I wanted to do, sports talk and play-by-play. -play. That was the bread and butter. I worked though for a company called Clear Channel. Who's familiar with Clear Channel? Now I heart. All right, so if you're familiar with them, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty quick with an ax to keep that budget. I got laid off six months in. Great ratings on, the, on my show and everything. Didn't matter, they, I got laid off. 12 hours later, they brought me back in. They're like, hey, can you do news? Sure, as long as you don't have a follow-up question. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't. That's how my whole news career got started. But I'm fairly competitive, uh, and I, if I was gonna do it, I wanted to do it right. So you know, we started paying attention to what other news organizations did, trying to emulate it, trying to innovate, and that's how we ended up with best small market news operation, things like that. That was not my box. And I would have been miserable if I was like, yeah, this, all right. I, you know, my box was all right, going down to Columbus, gonna talk about the Buckeyes, sports talk. We'll talk about, you know, the Reds and the Indians, now Guardians. That's, that's not what happened. But I was able to adapt and enjoy. Still got to do play-by-play, -play, still got to do breaking news, still got to do goofy things that I want to do on the radio. So, don't be a box checker. Don't mandate this box, have goals. I'm not saying don't have goals, but understand that the road's gonna change a little bit. That is my time, oh, why did I leave radio? Four in the morning, not the most fun day of time to start your day. I do get more time with my family now. Uh, the changing media landscape, it's a lot different than when I started. Uh, and now I get to work with businesses and I always like doing business stories, so now I just live in that world. But I use a lot of the different media techniques that I learned here and through my career now and uh, we've launched a podcast. We do Facebook Lives with members. I'm gonna do one with Dr. Fell here in just a little bit because it's an anniversary for the uh, University of Findlay with the Chamber. 
Any questions? By the way, some other advice. Don't let your friends ever take pictures of you during a photo shoot and like start screwing around and do that because they'll use it. They've used this a hundred times. I figured I, I would use this. I know I've gone longer than, uh, than I intended to, so I, if there are any questions, feel free to email me or get a hold of Ron. He can get in touch with me. Dr. Montague can get you in touch with me. But thank you for your time today. One of the things I would say um, that Doug could definitely give you some advice on too, which of course he wouldn't mention about himself, is, is having a sense of humor, humility, and, and hard work. You're one of the hardest working people I know, so thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. So now for our awards. Our first award is the Campus Leader Award. The Campus Leader Award is given to a College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences major who has exhibited leadership on campus during the current academic year, either in academics or in co-curricular activities. This year's recipient is Alyssa McDonald. Alyssa, will you join me on stage? <laughs> Alyssa is projected to graduate at the conclusion of the spring 2022 semester with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and psychology and a minor in Spanish. She has a cumulative GPA of 4.0. What a slouch. Has been on the Dean's List for six consecutive semesters, is a member of many honor societies, including Psi Chi, Alpha Phi Sigma, Phi Kappa Phi. A recipient of many scholarships, including the Founder Scholarship, Trustees Scholarship, Finley Town and Campus Endowed Scholarship, Moose Scholarship, Instrument Scholarship, and the Competitor Award. But what have you done lately? Alyssa is very engaged on campus. Among her many roles, she has served as treasurer for the Criminal Justice Forensic Science Club and as a resident assistant for UF Student Housing and also as a member of the UF JV basketball team. She's also been head coach for club volleyball and has served as a volunteer teacher of three to four-year-olds at her church. Additionally, she completed two internships in her time at UF, one with the Washington Center in Washington, D.C., and one with the Hancock County Kesa Gala organization, is that right? Upon graduation, she plans to pursue her master's degree in forensic psychology. So congratulations, Alyssa. <laughs> Our next award is the Leader of Tomorrow Award. The Leader of Tomorrow Award is given to a College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences major who has developed skills as a result of their studies that will help them become a leader at some point in the future. This award is for perceived potential for leadership in life after graduation. This year's recipient is Corinthia Webster. Corinthia, will you join me on stage? <laughs> Finally, someone I can see eye to eye with, right? Corinthia is a journalism digital media major. Corinthia's work with our student newspaper, The Pulse, and UFTV has given her platforms to display her news gathering skills, problem solving capabilities, and adaptability to unexpected challenges, just like Doug was just talking about. Her confidence in delivering the news is strong and continues to grow. She has taken on writing and newscasting responsibilities in campus media and is showing dedication, professionalism, and leadership qualities in her earliest efforts. Corinthia has also encouraged fellow students with an interest in writing and broadcasting to join UF Digital Media and consider adding a journalism digital media major or a digital media minor. To date, she's recruited one, and I understand she has another one in the queue. Her mentor and advisor, Dr. Diana Montague, notes, quote, she is only a first-year student, but she has the demeanor, work ethic, and maturity of a seasoned junior. Her personal organizational skills are impeccable. She is my academic advisee and plans her coursework and scheduling better than any of my upper class students. Corinthia was in my online COM 170 class last semester. She did all of her assignments early and completely. She was the top student in that class by far. If Corinthia weren't a full-time student, I'd be pushing admissions to hire her. She's amazing, end quote. High praise from a professional with high standards. Please join me in congratulating Corinthia Webster as this year's College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences Leader of Tomorrow. Our 
our next award is the Scholar of Leadership Award. The Scholar of Leadership Award is given to an arts, humanities, and social sciences major who has demonstrated leadership or leadership potential through scholarly and or professional activity. This award is for outstanding intellectual or experiential work. This year's recipient who is joining us via streaming, cannot be with us today, is uh, Katharina Kimmel. Katharina, I think, is watching from home today, so hopefully she's seeing this. So, Katharina is a history major with a museum studies minor and a computer science AA with a 4.0 GPA in her areas of study and a 3.85 overall GPA. She was nominated for the Scholar of Leadership Award based on her history capstone research presentation on the parallels between discrimination against Jews during the Black Death and discrimination against Asian Americans during the COVID pandemic in the U.S. Uh, please join me in congratulating Katharina Kimmel, this year's Scholar of Leadership Award. <laughs> Olivia Butler, can you join me on stage? While she's coming up. The DeBoe and Catherine Freed Academic Scholars Award was established by former University of Finley President Dr. DeBoe Freed. Dr. Freed served as the University of Finley 16th president from 2003 to 2010. He also served as the president of Monmouth College and Ohio Northern University, where he was president for 32 years. Mrs. Freed also had a positive impact as a community leader to each institution. At the University of Finley, she helped to bring the National Student Honor Societies to the university, supported the Mazza Museum, and helped in beautifying the campus. The Finley Mortarboard chapter is named for her as in a Galleria in the Mazza Museum and in the Contemporary Christian Lecture Series. The DeBoe and Catherine Freed Academic Scholars Award is presented annually to the highest ranking undergraduate student in each of our colleges, there are six, as measured by the highest cumulative grade point average and other activities after the first semester of one's senior year. And Olivia, I understand that you're receiving another award today from Dr. Postick, so I'm not going to steal all of his thunder because I know he has a lot more to say about you. Congratulations, Olivia. I have two things for you. Morning. I am Allison Kiefner Burmeister, an associate professor in the psychology department, and today I have the honor of presenting the Psychology Student of the Year Award to London Menning. London, will you join me, please? <laughs> London has a long list of accolades, including being president of the Psychology Club, being president of Psychi, our honor society. She is a writing center tutor, she runs track, and she is the student manager of my research lab. That basically means that she not only puts up with my 25 emails a day uh, with a smile on her face, but she also keeps half of my career on track, so she's very, very important to me personally. She's worked for me in my research lab for two years and has presented research at conferences. We're also leaving right after this ceremony to go to Indiana to go present more research at another conference too. We're actually leaving in a couple of hours, so we didn't, weren't even sure if we could squeeze this in today. That's how busy we can actually be. You know you're dealing with an exceptional young person when her life crisis was deciding what kind of doctoral degree to get. Not if she would get in, but which one exactly? When she had hip surgery and her wisdom teeth taken out at the same time over Christmas break this year, her statement to me was, it'll be perfect because I'll have a lot of time to work on that manuscript. <laughs> All I could think of was, I think you're ready for graduate school. <laughs> Most of you know that the psychology program and the occupational therapy program have a great partnership. And all I can say to you guys is, get ready for this one. She's gonna knock your socks off. I think we should also all take some time to think about the time period that made this year's graduating class. 
The class of 2022 knew us as faculty and staff in a very different ways from those that follow them. They knew us before. They had two years with us pre-pandemic. They knew us as people, they knew us maskless, they knew us as being able to shake hands and hug and celebrate in very different ways. They knew us as we pivoted our way through unprecedented times and social distance and went online, and now they know us again, hopefully at the light at the end of the tunnel. They were there with us, they guided us through it, and we all helped each other. And I don't think that we sometimes uh, give ourselves recognition for that and give our students recognition for how we did this as a unit and as a team. We learned Zoom together. We learned how to connect still being six feet apart. And we actually learned Workday together too, if you guys remember uh, that process. So they're very special to us. Our student of the year is a great researcher, a bright student, a wonderful person. She's a star that shone brightly even through a pandemic and I'm honored to present this year's Psychology Student of the Year Award to London Manning. I'll see you in a few hours. While it often takes a couple of semesters, and sometimes a couple of years, for comm students to get involved in campus media, a critical part of their education, every so often we have first year students who jump right in to create content and help with production work for Finley Media Network, even before they take any media classes. Today I'm delighted to um, further Dean Tully's announcement of Corinthia Webster being a future leader of the year and award her the outstanding first year student in communication. Corinthia Webster started working for UFTV and The Pulse, the student newspaper, at the very beginning of fall semester. She ran cameras, she wrote news, she wrote features, she anchored UFTV news. And while she's recently decided to look into another major, we appreciate that she continues to contribute to campus media and um, stay involved in UFTV productions. And we know that she will continue to take her communication skills as she continues to be a leader. Congratulations, Corinthia, on being the outstanding first year student in communication. Our outstanding student in communication is Leah Alsept. Leah, will you join me up here, please? This award is voted upon by the communication faculty for a graduating student in one of our three communication majors who has excelled in their studies and in participation in campus media. Leah is graduating with a degree in journalism digital media She's been the editor of The Pulse and president of UF Digital Media Club. She's polished her digital media storytelling skills through two internships with Home Place Creative and City Mission in Finley. She'll have a third internship this summer, most likely with a more traditional journalism outlet so that she can have a wide variety of communication experiences before she goes out into the professional world. Leah, it has been a delight to watch you grow in confidence and communication skills over the last several years. So congratulations on being named the Outstanding Student in Communication for 2022. The Greenwood Air Prize in Communication was established by the late James Greenwood, who was a professor in the Communication Department for over 25 years. He designed this award in memory of his grandparents, and historically, the Greenwood Air Prize has been the award of highest honor in the comm department. The recipients are selected by the Communication Department faculty using the following criteria. The student's contribution to and involvement in the life of the University of Finley community, the student's commitment to a career in communication, and the student's scholarship. This year, we present the Greenwood Air Prize in Communication to Leah Alsept. As noted a couple minutes ago, 
Lee has taken on leadership roles in campus media and she has participated in multiple internships. She has a good journalistic sense of digital storytelling and she's produced excellent content in her courses, both in print and audiovisual format. Congratulations, Leah, and being named, well, uh, still congratulations on being named the outstanding student uh, in communication, but congratulations on receiving the Greenwood Air Prize in Communication. Would uh, Megan Isinger and Abigail Starcher and Sarah Basicki join me on stage, please, um, while they're coming up? Uh, so I'm really lucky. I get to work with great student creative writing like just about every day. And I forget that, that many of, of you all don't see all of this writing and how much great writing we have going on all the time here. So I'm really happy every chance we get to uh, to promote student writing and, and also to give writers money, which, which we also are here to do. Um, so uh, I'm privileged and honored to present the Gigi Brewer Awards in creative writing. Um, every year, the brewers are selected from, from submissions to the on-campus literary magazine from the Writer's Kitchen, which looks like this and is newly out. There are copies on campus, right? Um, so, let's see, and uh, we have certificates and we have checks. Um, and um, our third place award for her poem, um, Overplayed, it was Overplayed, right? Uh, Abigail, we have the certificate and congratulations. And second place, uh, I think the, the poem was Deepest Desire. Does that sound right, Megan? Yeah, we have Megan Isinger. <laughs> and Sarah Vesicki, I guess, doesn't, isn't able to be here today, but uh, she, she won first place for her poem, Those Damned Women. And uh, all of those are, again, in here. So thanks for being here, and congrats to this year's winners of the Brewers. Good morning. I am Sarah Federka. I am an associate professor and the chair of the Department of English. It is my privilege to be here this morning to celebrate so many of you and all of your wonderful accomplishments. I am here to present two awards. I will start with honors in English. So if Eden Middleton could join me on stage and Zoe Hills if she is here. While they are coming up this way, I will tell you that Honors in English is awarded to English majors in their senior year who have earned a GPA of at least 3.7 in the English major and a 3.5 in all courses, and who demonstrate strong scholarly and creative ability in papers and projects. This is voted on by the faculty in the Department of English. I should have come to you. I'm going to talk first about Zoe. A creative writer and scholar of promise, Zoe brings her unique perspective of the world into class and each class and writing assignment. Zoe asks great questions and thinks deeply about the craft of writing, which she sees as a way to help herself and others understand the world. Through her words, she aims to, and these are Zoe's words, help the reader visualize what I want them to see. What she helps readers see is a new perspective on themselves and on each other. Zoe has been at work on her novel, The Altered, 
While rooted in science fiction, Zoe intentionally defies traditional genre classifications as a way to appeal to a wider variety of readers. Zoe is committed to bringing individuals back to reading. Her senior capstone project, which was titled Forging a New Path, Experimenting with a Different Method for Writing Novels to Motivate the Nation to Read Using My Novel, The Altered, was accepted for presentation at NCUR 2022, which is the National Conference on Undergraduate Research. Zoe is an empathetic young woman, and it has been my privilege to have her in a number of classes. Eden Middleton is a talented and inspired writer. She is curious to understand how language shapes one's identity and one's interactions in the world. She carries a 4.0 GPA and yet finds time to work as a writing center tutor and is the poetry editor of this year's Slippery Elm Literary Magazine. Her creative work appears in our most recent edition of From the Writer's Kitchen, which Jave just brilliantly advertised, uh, and she is also the layout editor for that journal. Later this afternoon, Eden will present her senior capstone project, which was titled When Will I Know? Using Poetry to Discover Personal Identity at NCUR, which will be happening virtually so the students can enjoy today and be here and also be presenting to an audience of thousands of people across the country. No pressure. Uh, beyond all of this, Eden is simply a delightful young woman with a compassionate heart. It is my pleasure to present these young women with the Honors in English Award. It is now my pleasure to present the R. L. Gephardt English Award. We have recognized our graduating seniors, and now it is time for us to recognize an outstanding first or second year student. So, Cora Purvis, if you are here, could you please join me on stage? This award, as I mentioned, is given to a first or second year student with a strong overall academic record who is selected for writing ability and the promise of future success in fields within English studies. This might include professional writing, teaching in uh, public schools or at the college level, or in graduate study. Cora is completing her first year at UF, and what a successful year it has been. In addition to getting involved with our literary magazines, Cora was selected to be a writing center tutor, a position that allows her to share her knowledge and love of writing with her peers. She had work, two works published in From the Writer's Kitchen, and she carries a 3.93 cumulative GPA and a 4.0 within the major. Those of us privileged to have had Cora in class recognize her strengths as a critical reader, writer, and thinker, as well as her wonderful sense of humor and her kind-heartedness. Cora, it is my pleasure to present to you the R. L. Gephardt Award. Hello, I'm Judith Lanserdorfer. I'm an associate professor of English, and I am the writing program director, and it is my pleasure today to present the first and second year writing awards. Could Emma Otley, Caitlin Savota, Keegan Allen, and Julia Bell please come to the stage? The Robert E. Wold English Award is presented to students in a second level writing class for excellence in multimodal projects. The projects um, that we have here today derive from an English 272 introduction to technical communication class where students work in groups with their final project um, being an alphabetic text project like a brochure and then also a digital project like a PowerPoint. So we have two groups represented today. Um, Emma Otley and Caitlin Svoboda um, are winning first prize today for their presentation, Happiness Levels of Wild and Domestic Animals. Emma, okay. <laughs> 
And because we had so many fine projects, we wanted to make sure that we recognized another group, um, and that includes Tegan Allen, Julia Bell, and Patrick Hibbler, who is not able to be with us today, but we will get him his um, certificate. Um, they um, won for their project on disordered eating and misconceptions, and they have received honorable mention for that. Thank you very much, very well deserved. Could Olivia Klubert, Riley Adkins, and Annabelle McMillan please come to the stage? The Richard C. Gephardt Award for Freshman Writing is the next award. And if you don't know, the transition from high school writing to college writing is very, very difficult. You are introduced to so many new genre, like really, how many times you write a lit review in high school? Probably never. Um, and um, you are introduced to research and new types of documentation. So this award presented to these ladies really speaks to making that transition and doing so in a very strong and beautiful way. Um, so this is you know, an award after my own heart because um, they're making that transition, really showing that they are able to not just write, on a college level to excel in writing on the college level. And we have three awards today. We have Olivia Klebert winning first prize for her work. Thank you. Riley Adkins, second place. And Annabelle McMillan, third place. Thank you very much, it's very well deserved. everyone, I'm Christine Telly. I direct the graduate program in rhetoric and writing and both of our award winners today for the Doug Hesse Award uh, could not be with us, but I just wanted to say one quick thing about both of them if they're watching this. Um, both of them are outstanding students in our program. This award is given to all around best scholars, best teachers, best writers um, in the program and since we're a master's degree in writing studies, it's a pretty tough award to get. Um, both of these students, Alexandra Chekhov and Adam Pittman, um, are both outstanding. We decided to give two awards this year, and between the two of them, they have been accepted at 13 different PhD programs, and we have a 100% placement rate for these students. So all of the schools accepted them, so they're truly outstanding and will be wonderful professors. So they will get a certificate, a uh, check, and a very nice um, po uh, portfolio, so when they're professors, they can look the part. Thanks, everybody. Hello, I'm Nicole Diedrich, and I am honored to be the faculty advisor for our English Honor Society, Sigma Tau Delta, and to introduce to you the inductees for this year's Honor Society. I think they know who they are, and if they want to make their way to the stage, I will tell you a little bit about our organization. Our chapter is, has the mission of fostering literacy in the community through acts of service. We are an English Honor Society that is nationwide. In order to qualify at the graduate level, graduate inductees achieve a minimum 3.3 GPA and must have completed at least six semester hours in English or related field. Undergraduate inductees achieve a minimum 3.0 GPA and must have completed three semesters of college coursework, including six hours of English-related coursework beyond the first writing requirements. But membership for undergraduates is open to all majors. Now, not all of our new majors are present today, but we welcome the following Sigma Tau Delta members who will be formally inducted on Monday. Samantha Adkins, not here. Ashley Allen. <laughs> Marissa Baker. <laughs> Mar 
McKenna Dosick. <laughs> Olivia Hyatt. <laughs> Though the next four inductees, I'm going in alphabetical order, are not able to be with us today. Uh, Brianna Mobley, Adam Pittman, Travis Rindler, and Jenna Simon. But then we have Emma Smith, Eliza Stahl is also not with us today. And finally, Natalie Wirtz. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you. And thank you to my vice president and president for helping. Hello, my name is Jamie Lee Kim. I'm an associate professor of forensic sciences. And the student who's getting our outstanding forensic science student award can't be here today. But I still wanted to share a little bit about her. She's here. Oh, is she? Liz, you came. OK. I was going to say, um, I was going to say she was supposed to be at a game. So I'm surprised to see her. But OK, well, that's great. Now I'm like really excited because I'm like, oh, I got to get this thing. She won't even know what I said. Okay, this is great. All right. During her time in the program, Liz has maintained an impressive career focus with aspirations of working for the federal government. Since her first year, she has worked toward the, this goal tenaciously. She's maintained a rigorous physical fitness regimen as a college lacrosse player and held part-time jobs in outdoor leadership and as a lifeguard. At the same time, she has kept a high GPA in our rigorous natural science-based program. She's a forensic chemistry major. Um, it's, it's not an easy, easy major by any means. She earned an internship for chemical and biological defense at Aberdeen Proving Ground that was unfortunately canceled due to COVID-19. This, however, did not deter her, and she was able to maintain an internship with the Bethany, to obtain an internship with the Bethany Beach Police Department in Delaware. She has maintained professionalism when assisting me with casework in the morgue and during cemetery exhumations conducted with the FBI and the Detroit Police Department. Despite her arduous schedule, I should mention Liz has also a notable history of community service work. Given Elizabeth's many achievements, she stands apart as an outstanding student in the forensic science program, and I have no doubt that she will one day be an impressive federal agent, and I don't want to be on the wrong side of any investigation she conducts, that's for sure. Thank you, Liz. Would Alyssa McDonald join me on stage? I'm Todd Beitzel. I'm the chair of the Justice Sciences Department, and I'm very honored today to provide Alyssa with the Andrew C. Baldridge Memorial Criminal Justice Student of the Year Award. Uh, this award has a special place in the hearts of the members of the Justice Sciences Department. It was named after Andrew Baldridge. Uh, Andrew was a graduate of the Criminal Justice Program. Uh, while he was here, he was an excellent student. Uh, he was a very determined person and an outstanding leader. And he also received the Criminal Justice Student of the Year Award. Upon graduation, uh, he was fortunate enough to get a dream job of his in his hometown with the Sheriff's Department. But tragically, his career was cut very short. Uh, he was killed uh, when he was on his way to a uh, burglary in progress. And we decided, uh, given that um, Andrew was such a special person to all of us, that we would name the award after Andrew C. Baldridge. Uh, today, though, I would like to honor Alyssa McDonald. Uh, she is a very deserving candidate. Uh, as Dr. Tully, uh, he stole all my thunder. Um, so I won't catalog all of her accomplishments again, but I'll just speak a little bit from the heart. I have truly enjoyed the time I've gotten to spend with Alyssa. Uh, she was always an immense pleasure to have in class. Uh, she always came to prayer class prepared. Uh, she always engaged in, in class discussions, uh, and she was always ready to contribute whenever you needed her to. I also got to know Alyssa a little bit outside the classroom. She was an active member in our Criminal Justice Forensic Science student organization, uh, and she participated in um, developing 
uh, community service activities, a lot of professional uh, speakers uh, that came to our club and spoke, and um, was just a, a very active member in the club, and she runs a mean game of mafia. Uh, she always, we, we, had, we played this fun game in the club, and uh, Alyssa always led the, the game, and she did an outstanding job doing that. Um, as you've heard from her academic accomplishments, Alyssa is going to do great work in graduate school, uh, and she's going to be an outstanding professional. I envy whatever organization or corporation ends up with Alyssa as one of her employees. She's a very dedicated, determined, uh, while unassuming and humble, uh, don't let that fool you because uh, she gets the job done. And I'm very proud to give the Andrew C. Baldridge Criminal Justice Student of the Year Award to Alyssa McDonald this year. Good morning. My name is Darcy Metcalf, and I am an assistant professor in the philosophy and religious studies department here at the University of Finley. And I am honored uh, today to uh, give the religious studies award uh, to uh, one of our top students in the religious studies department. So at this time, I would like to invite Ashley Allen to come forward, please. And Ashley um, is a double major. She's very busy, a double major in both English and religion. And she excels at all of her classes, and both in the religious studies, English department, but also in the sciences. Um, and she has many qualities that have shaped her to be the wonderful student um, that she is. She has a impeccable work ethic um, she's dedicated to her work, works hard at everything she, she does inside and outside the classroom. And um, she also um, has really shaped her ability to think critically and outside of the box and, and bring new perspective to the classroom and to all of the work that, that she turns in. Um, through her time with the Religious Studies Program, um, the department has seen that um, the top tier student is, is also a top tier person, an individual in the world. Um, she's considerate of those around her and she uplifts those around her in, in the classroom. So we uh, are very fortunate to have her here at Finley and in the religious studies and in English departments. So at this time, I am greatly honored to present this award to Ashley and to celebrate her achievements and all of our students here today. Tamara Medikoff, if you could come up as well, please. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leah Brandt, and I teach American Sign Language. And it is my honor to present the outstanding ASL language recipient, Leanna Inglefinger. Leanna is from a small town near Buffalo, New York, and she's a pre-vet animal science major. She is in her second year, or second semester, sorry, of ASL, and I am so glad she is. She, she has always had a passion for learning languages. Um, she started way back in seventh grade. Um, she studied Latin for four years, and then she studied Mandarin Chinese for two years. When she learned that the, the University of Finley had an ASL program, she was excited to dive in and learn as much as she could. And I'm so glad, again, that she did this. Uh, Leanna is, uh, she's also one of my ASL student workers. And in the classroom, she was just so passionate about learning. I mean, you could just see she was a little sponge. She just soaks it all in. And not only that, she was so engaging with other students. 
and she just, you know, if a student was having a little difficulty, she'd jump right in. So Leanna hopes that she's able to use her knowledge in all her languages, but especially ASL, to create an inclusive environment for deaf and hard of hearing and foreign language pet owners to attain accessible and informed pet care as a vet. So I honor, it is my honor to give this award to Leanna. I'm not Hero, okay? Um, I'm, but I'm standing in for him. Hero's off doing amazing Hero things. Yes, <laughs> whatever he does. He's sparkling somewhere. <laughs> but Tamara, uh, let's see. She is receiving this year's Outstanding Student in Japanese. Tamara is a junior majoring in Japanese and Spanish. In addition to studying, she has been helping first and second year students as a tutor. Last year, she received the Outstanding Student in Spanish Award. She is now getting the Japanese Award. Take ASL and I'll give you the ASL Award too. <laughs> we would like to recognize her great potential as a language learner with this award. I'm Dr. John Cruz. I'm in charge of the Spanish program. Um, please, uh, Marilene and, and Caitlin came to the stage. <laughs> I'm the, I have the honor to present this uh, award to these magnificent students. Um, both of them have amazing skills in the language and also they are eager to learn about the Hispanic culture as well. Um, Madeleine is a biology major, major with minor in chemistry and Spanish. Uh, outside of the classroom, she enjoys playing soccer, football, the real football, not the false one, uh, thrifting, and also doing Sudoku. And I'm pretty sure you like to do uh, crosswords in Spanish as well. Yeah, okay. She has been studying Spanish since she, since, since she was in fourth grade. Uh, learning a foreign language is important to her to help break barriers and connect with others in a deeper level we're, while also understanding their culture. And I'm pretty sure you have understand more while being with me as well. Uh, the Spanish program here at Finley has enabled her to further explore the Spanish language and culture and what she said about me, which is very interesting. Dr. Cruz encouraged her to not be afraid to speak in class and challenge, challenging her to learn more. And that's true, I always challenge students to speak because the most important thing when you learn a language is speaking. It's not being afraid to speak. It's like jumping in a pool and trying to survive when you are speaking in this way. So that's what you have done since I met you like two years ago. The growth that I have seen in you has been amazing and that's why you are here. Uh, after graduation, she plans to further her education by attending a PS school to become a physician assistant. Am I right? Yeah. And studying Spanish will be a great asset to her as she goes into the medical field. And I don't know if you know, but there's a big need of a lot of people in the medical field that will be able to speak a different language than English. And I encourage her to work harder on that because I know you will do a great job on that. Okay. So this is for you, Madeline. And it was hard for me to choose just one student because I have great, great students. Last year I had Tamara, which now this year she got it in Japanese. And I also thought that Caitlin Chand was a great uh, uh, student for me to award today. Since I met her the first time when she came to my office and she told me that she uh, wanted to uh, minor in Spanish, I saw uh, the great skills that she acquired through high school and she was able to communicate at her own level at that time and prove me that she was eager to learn more and get better at the same time. Kellen has been studying Spanish since she's great and it's her favorite class here, at, oh, favorite class here at the UF. Okay, that's great, good to know that. 
And, and she plans on uh, minoring in Spanish alongside with her animal science private major. And also, um, outstanding of outside of class, she loves to read, write, and watch uh, Latino soup operas. She loves the drama. <laughs> She loves studying Spanish not only because it is an important language to the world, but also because she has fallen in love with the language and the culture of Spanish uh, of Spanish countries. This is one of my policies of uh, my syllabus. Uh, it's like the main thing that you have to do in this class is to fall in love with Spanish. That's the best thing for you to do in your life. And when you fall in love with something, you get it right. You have gotten it right. After graduation, she plans to attend vet school to eventually become a veterinarian. And also, I heard from one of my students that she is graduating this year in pre-vet. She was accepted in different uh, schools to further her program, to go along with her program. And one of the things that they were more interested of is because she was able to speak Spanish and minor in Spanish. So that will be a big asset for you in the future for a vet. Okay. Thank you and congratulations. All right, I have my hero hat on again. All right, so um, I'm presenting the Friends of Family Award, or Friends of Family. Oh, he, hero's gonna take the hat back. Friends of Finley Award, that's where we are. And so I need Timothy Cunningham, Summer Freeman, Abigail Campbell, and Samuel Thacker. Come on up. And while they're coming up, I'll explain. Friends of Finley is the Northwest Ohio Japanese Business Association. It consists of 13 Japanese companies, and one of its core missions is to foster a stronger relationship between the Japanese and local communities. Every year, they give us funds to recognize students who exhibit high potential to build a bridge between the Japanese and local communities. And this year, our Department of Language and Culture has selected Timothy, Summer, Abigail, and Sam. So Tim is majoring in Japanese and international studies. His passion is to connect people with language and culture study and activities. He is currently serving the Japanese Culture Club as president. Starting next fall and spring, he's going to be studying abroad in Japan. So Tim, congratulations. Next, we have Summer. Summer is a junior majoring in Japanese. She has been serving the local Japanese communi community as a language tutor. She has also participated in many cultural outreach activities, even during COVID. She too will be studying abroad starting in the fall of 22, and her future goal is to also teach English in Japan. So congratulations to Summer. Abigail is a TESOL major with a minor in Japanese. Like Summer, she has been tutoring Japanese community people. She's also working with the first and second year students as a tutor. So congratulations to Abigail. <laughs> Sam is not with us today because he's busy being an intern at Disneyland in California. So a round of applause for Sam in California. And all of these students have demonstrated potential to serve as a bridge to connect people in Finley, Ohio, and the world. We have high expectations on you, so please keep up the great work. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Philip Roulard. I'm an assistant professor of technical theater. And bear with me as I'm not used to being on this side of the lights. Uh, would Eliza Brisbane and Robert Riffle please join me up on stage? Um, as in theater, we are a collaborative art form. We work together not only with our students as faculty, but our students work together in the classroom, in our rehearsal room, um, and with our outside artists that come in to assist us in our performances. 
Um, as storytellers, they work hard in the rehearsal room and in the classroom to apply those skills on stage um, as our storytellers. These two students have been leaders within the theater program for their entire time here. They have dealt with faculty changes and dealing with how to perform in the time of COVID uh, and have been leaders within our program and have been faithful to creating and doing their work on stage. Uh, Eliza and Robert have both been on stage for over 20 different productions between the two of them. That is a lot of work, a lot of long nights in the rehearsal room uh, and tech rehearsals, uh, un unbearable costume fittings and makeup applications as well. Um, <clears throat> so it's noted that they have put in a lot of, of hard work. Uh, Eliza and Robbie both been in our productions this year, Comedy of Errors and most recently Godspell, but they're not totally done yet. Uh, Eliza is directing our final production of the year, Five Women Wearing the Same Dress. It's her sort of senior pro uh, capstone project. Uh, and Robbie was also in Comedy of Errors and Godspell uh, and is sound designing our last project and has really become sort of my right-hand person this last year. Uh, I was blessed as a new faculty member to have them work with us this year to help us tell us how theater has been done in the past. Um, I wish I had been able to be here for all four years. So our, this year's outstanding theater uh, seniors in theater are Eliza Brisbane and Robbie Riffle. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Buchanan. I'm a new associate professor in history and law. And um, I'd like to ask Clayton Ansel if he's here to come up. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Clayton works full time at the New York, at the um, Finley Courier newspaper. And so sometimes newspaper business takes him away. Um, anyway, on behalf of the History, Law and the Liberal Arts, and Gender Studies faculty at the University of Finlay, I'd like to recognize Clayton Ansel for his outstanding accomplishments in Law and the Liberal Arts program. Clayton is graduating this year as a senior with joint degrees in Law and History, so you're going to see him twice on this stage um, in a few minutes. Um, his GPA is near perfect, I think 3.97 last time I looked. Um, Clayton is being recognized for exceptional performances in both programs. Um, he's particularly deserving um, in that he completed these joint programs with exceptional grades while working full time. I mean, he's essentially put himself through university um, working for the local newspaper. I've had Clayton in several of my classes, and it's a pleasure because he's prepared and he knows the material. He also has a dry but very wicked sense of humor, and a well thought out and personal approach um, or perspective which enlivens the discussions um, and helps these other students see alternate ways of looking at things. The Law SAT, which is the test that's required um, to gain law school admissions, um, requires, among other things, um, completion of a section on logical analysis, which is Aristilian logic, essentially. Um, and by way of example, I mean, you probably recognize these problems from past tests. You know, if John always sits near Mary, but never by Sally, and generally in the fourth row, and it's April and it's raining and someone else sits in the fourth row, where is John sitting? I mean, you have to be able to work through these kinds of problems. The section is difficult for many students um, because they're, they, well, because they don't do enough Sudoku in my personal opinion. Um, but. Um, but it's not an easy section. Clayton aces that section, which should give you an idea on how his mind works. He's going to be a fabulous attorney. Um, I will miss seeing him at the University of Finley, um, but he's moving on to bigger and better things. Um, he applied to a number of law schools and was admitted to essentially all of them, many with full scholarships. I think he's decided on Penn State, Penn State Law School, which is a very prestigious law school um, with high national ratings on a full scholarship. 
So I look forward to seeing his future accomplishments. Um, congratulations, Clayton, on your outstanding academic performance.